Okay, good afternoon everyone. This is Delicious and Nutritious. My name is Jerry Levine. Uh, Marsha Richards, who is a nutritionist di a dietitian with uh, Beth Israel as well as uh, Healthy Plymouth. And we are at the uh, Center for Active Living for the town of Plymouth. And uh, we are going to cook baby back ribs. Mm. And we are also mm. going to cook a southern coleslaw which is not the gloppy so coleslaw with all the mayonnaise and stuff. Uh, you'll, you'll see how I do, it, do that. But I'm going to turn this over to Marsha for a moment, and right. then she's going to let me do my thing. Yeah, so thank you all for coming here. Beautiful day. We couldn't have ordered better weather. So we're going to be grilling. After Jerry's done, or maybe during his preparation, I'm going to talk a little bit about grilling as a cooking strategy from a health standpoint and even a little bit about some human evolution. A couple of the key nutrients that you'll get from this meal are B vitamins, primarily thiamine and niacin from the ribs, which are pork. So these are baby back ribs, so they come from a pig, compared to short ribs, which come from a cow. Cow. Right? Exactly. Kind of makes sense that a pig is smaller than a cow, so they'd be baby size. Well, you also <laughs> have one, uh, another sub part of the, the pig, which is called the St. Louis uh, style uh, rib, and it's much bigger and there's more fat on it. I like mm. these because there's less fat on it. From a nutritional point of view, yep. it makes sense to me. It does, yeah. And even trying to have pork or some other B vitamin rich food at least once a week is a really good idea. B vitamins are great for your nervous system. They also help to stimulate the appetite. They have a lot to do with several processes in your body, especially energy metabolism. So we eat for fuel, just like you put gas in your car or batteries in your flashlights or phones. We need to gather energy from food and B vitamins are one of the nutrients that help us to metabolize this great energy. The slaw is super high in A and C. Both are great for your immune system, protect you from germs and diseases. A is known for its um, opportunity to really help with vision, to keep your cornea healthy, and the cornea is kind of like the windshield on your eye. So vitamin A rich foods, the carrots and the cabbage are really good to have every day. And vitamin C helps to create collagen which is the cement that kind of holds us together, holds all of our cells together. It also helps to create the matrix of our bones and our teeth. So just a few tidbits about the nutrients. So I'm with Jerry that eating is fun and you might not think about all of these things when you're eating the ribs or the slaw, but I was thinking about it. And I wanted to make sure that you all got the nutrients that you need. So food should be fun. We should eat together socially, we should smile, we should enjoy every minute of it. But my bottom line is I wanna make sure that you're getting those nutrients that you need for your health. So I'm gonna end it there and I'd like to talk a little bit more about fire okay. later. Sounds good. All right. All right. Um, what we're going to do is we have two sets, two ribs or racks they're called in the chef industry of baby back ribs. These were actually cooked for three and a half hours, then put in the refrigerator overnight, and I'm going to finish them on the grill. Now, this is a gas grill, but you could do it in a charcoal grill. They work both the same. First thing with the ribs, they come in a nice little package, and you'll notice that when you turn them over, that, that right along here, there is a membrane, and that membrane is a little tough. But what you, you do to get rid of the membrane is you take your knife, that is very sharp because you've sharpened it. And this is one of my uh, <laughs> favorite sharpeners. It's a hand sharpener. It's about $20, $25. And it's called Chef Choice. You can buy them at a number of different places. And before you do anything, Sorry. you just put, whoops, you put it in here like this. And you do it about 20 times like that on this side and about 10 times on this side and you have a nice sharp knife. The most important thing is that while you're doing it, you don't do it this way, 
Okay, so you, you make sure your leg is out of the way, mm. and away we go. I'm going to show you some of my favorite things that I like to work with, and this is one of them. Okay, so what we do with the knife is we hold the knife in a nice firm grip, and we take and we work our way underneath the membrane here like this. Then we had to take a paper towel and we lift the, the membrane and we slowly pull it across here and, and the membrane just goes zip and it's gone. Okay. Is this going to happen the first time you guys try it? No. no. <laughs> There's a little technique here. Bear with me. Okay. So let's turn this guy back over and we go on to the next step. If you'll notice that uh, the handout divides the baby back ribs into a rub. And what, what is a rub? This is a rub, okay? And the rub right here is basically spices, a tiny little bit of salt, uh, pepper, there's some cayenne in here. And you'll notice my favorite storage jar, which is a jelly <laughs> jar, and it's great. You know, th this rub will last for probably five to six months uh, in a cabinet. You don't have to refrigerate it. All right, you take the rub, you sprinkle it on top, you sprinkle it on top, and then you push it in, and then you flip it over, and then you sprinkle some more on there, and rub it in, get it in there. Make sure you get the ends and the corners, okay? Now, what do we do? We take these things, we put them on a, uh, a cookie sheet, cookie sheet with sides on it. We've already started our oven, not this. We're, we're going to use the oven that is inside our house, and we're going to put that on 250 degrees. Now, that is a low temperature, but the 250 degrees will actually, we're going to cook it for two and a half hours at 250 degrees. That's a long time, but why are we doing that? Because we want it nice and tender. All right, after the 250 degrees, we have a marinade that is made up with apple cider and, and a few other things. We put that on top of this, take a piece of aluminum foil, put, uh, put it in there so we got a nice tight packet, and that tight packet, uh, we put it back inside the oven, and we cook it for another hour. So now we've got two and a half, and another hour, that's three and a half hours. That's a long time. But you know, you can go watch your favorite uh, television show. You can uh, uh, do the floor or whatever you want to do. Watch past episodes of Delicious and Nutritious. You, you can do that also. Yeah, yeah. Now, at, <laughs> at this time, we have, we have an option. The option is, is we can go out and fire up the Barbie, or we can take these ribs and wrap them in aluminum foil and put them in the refrigerator because we really want to use them the next day. Mm. Or we can use them the same day by firing up the barbie. All right, so it gives us the flexibility so you don't have to stay around for three and a half hours and then make sure that you're, you're, you're timing this thing, you're ready to go, and that's where you are. Now, we've got the barbie fired up, and we, we were cooking in, uh, on, in the oven, 250. This right here is about 450 right now. All right, I've set, cut down the center part of it, and I've got the two outside going, and that's just called indirect heating. So we open it up, and look at that. No smoke, nothing, which is good because it means we've cleaned it off properly. Now we take this here, and we're going to put it on like that. And we take this. Can you hear it sizzle? Ah, I love the yeah. sizzling. It's a nice sound. It is. And we put that there, and we have a barbecue sauce. How do we put the barbecue sauce on? We find our little, oh, good. This is great, and it it's really works extremely well. You want to make sure you don't touch the grill with it. So, now the barbecue sauce, I would suggest to make life easy for you, is use a commercial barbecue sauce that you've tried a few times and that you like. And all you got to do is, is slather it on and get, get, a, get a good coating on it. Remember, this is fully cooked. So all you're really trying to do is to get the barbecue sauce in here. 
and add a little more flavor. It smells awesome. Oh, it is awesome. It's one of the better things that I've come up with in my life. We're going to turn it over and we're going to do the back side and then we're going to turn it over again and work on the front side. So in this recipe is available on... Now we're going to do southern coleslaw and what we have here is a coleslaw and notice how big the pieces are and notice how attractive this looks mm -hmm. and it's it's not the little kind of thing that is gro all ground up and you know you can use something like this a box grater all right you can use something like this but i prefer actually is to use a uh, uh, either a knife or a cuisinart or a mandolin this is a small mandolin mm -hmm. and what you do is you, sh you shave it or this is a larger mandolin and you know the best thing about this mandolin is that you take a look at it and you say how do i use something like that they all come with a manual yeah the, and, the, and the manual is amazing yep. it'll the manual it'll teach you everything and i'm not going to go through demonstrations on this but what we have here, and, and, and look at the colors. It, it's attractive. It makes you want to eat this mm -hmm. thing. In those deep colors, when you see really deep, beautiful colors in your foods, especially your fruits and vegetables, that's also a deep source of nutrients. Okay. So eating from the rainbow is a really good idea. Now, the dressing that's going on here. Why, didn't, why isn't the dressing on there? Because I don't like to leave dressings on, on, the, uh, on the vegetables for a long period of time, they get soggy. So what we've got here is the dressing was made in my favorite jar and uh, I shook it up and it, it, we spent the night in the refrigerator. You'll notice that it's all emulsified because there's a little mayo in here and it's a light mayo with a low sodium in it and you just give it a quick shake now we are going to pour on here. You'll notice I am not big on huge amounts of dressing. And you toss it really nice. And we're going to add a little bit more. And then we're going to go back to the baby back ribs and we're going to serve people. So that's that. And and um, all of these, both of these recipes are also relatively low in sodium. The ribs come out to about 400 milligrams from start to finish. And the slaw is 280. So oh. you're having a meal with about 500 milligrams of sodium, which is pretty good if you're trying to stick to the American Heart Association guidelines of about 2,300 milligrams. Okay. If you can keep to six or seven hundred a meal, you're doing pretty good. Now, we're going back to baby back ribs. Yep. We're going to do a, a final schmear. Ah, does this smell good? It smells awesome. Can you smell it back there? Yeah. Pretty good, huh? <laughs> okay. Now, they're coming off. We're getting ready to try them. So cooking with fire is considered to be one of man's greatest evolutionary times. So when, if we ate raw meat when we were the Paleolithic man, it would take a lot of energy, right? To chew and chew and chew and chew. When we cook meats especially, that cooking process breaks down some of the muscle, makes it easier for us to consume things. And there is some theory that when fire was realized and cooking food became more prominent, that was the beginning of the human brain evolving and getting larger. So it's pretty cool. Cooking with fire, however, we should go towards those low heats, as Jerry mentioned earlier. The 250 oven is considered low. Um, the grill, he brought down to about 350, which would be considered low. There's concern that there might be some chemicals that get created from meats when we cook them at a really high heat. 
So cooking low and slow, not only do you get a nicer, more tender product, but it's probably going to be a healthier product for you in the long run. So the days of grilling at a high heat and searing, those days are kind of going by the wayside. And what we should do instead is use the grill or a smoker, but bring the temperature down. Bake, use a crock pot, um, saute, saute, roast, do some of those things at lower heats and it could be healthier for us. Now, one of the things you notice that I flipped the ribs over when I was cutting them, and I did that because it allows me to see where the rib is better than on the front side. So I, you, you'll see the end, and you can hear me hitting the rib. Mm -hmm. All right, so now I just hold it with my left hand, and I just go straight down into it, and it will come apart. Look at that and a little bit of a twist at the very end. And we're working our way through this and we will eventually start serving. And these are about one ounce of meat each, typically in a baby back rib. And most of us should be trying to get about three or four ounces of protein at a meal. So, you know, having three or four of these would be a good serving size for you from a nutrition standpoint. Okay. What are we at? Uh, Five. Anybody have questions. We like questions. We love questions. The well, question is, do you have to finish it in the grill? So what if you wanted to have the sauce, but you didn't want to do it in the grill? Is there another solution? Um, I'll tell you, I, I personally think finishing it in the grill is a better way than not finishing it in the grill. And the reason I'm saying that is because it, uh, it gives it a little more flavor and I think it's a much more attractive way of doing it. Could you broil if you didn't have a grill? Uh, you can broil. Okay. Broiling is fine. Okay. Okay. Yes, Marianne. Charcoal would be fine. I'm answering for Charcoal call you. is perfect. <laughs> no, you know what? It, uh, if you'll remember when I said uh, I set it up, I've got two burners on the outside and I was cooking in the middle. That's called indirect. I like indirect because you get less heat and it keeps the heat down. Marsha was saying that, that high temperatures causes some chemical changes that you do not want to have. Uh, either that way or you leave the outside burners on and the center ones off and then uh, cook on the no, center. Charcoal. Oh, no, you, uh, you can do that by just moving the charcoal. Or you can take the charcoal well, and idea. you do it on one side and you yeah. cook it on the other. That, that works quite well. Great idea. Okay. Uh, questions, please. Yes. yes. Oh, it's uh, it, it's in your um, your oh, handout. Oh. It was red cabbage, white cabbage, some carrots. Um, the dressing was a caraway seed, a mustard seed, a celery seed. So if um, you don't have a copy of the recipe, you can access it on healthyplymouth.org in addition to other episodes of Delicious and Nutritious and many, many, many other recipes. If you would like to join us for our next Delicious and Nutritious, please contact the Center for Active Living or stay on the lookout on the Healthy Plymouth site. And we also like for a few guests to join us in the studio kitchen at PAC TV. Mm -hmm. So if you would like to be in the studio kitchen for the next episode in September, let the Center for Active Living know that you'd be interested in that. So. Okay, we are about ready to start serving some samples. All right, and I'm gonna make um, one last pitch, I guess, that we love doing this. Our goal is to provide you with information that you want as well as need. So any thoughts that you have, any nutrients you're interested in, any foods that you'd like to learn more about, let us know and we'll build a show around that because this is your show. We, no, there, we're going to have to do it the way we have been doing it, which is we do the shooting at uh, PAC TV, and the reason being is that it's a better way for us to cook, and so you have a, a better opportunity to see exactly what we are doing. 
because the stove in the, in here is all the way in the back. You can't minutes? see what I'm doing. Oh, and we have it, seven minutes. That's good. Okay, we have seven minutes. That's that's wonderful. We're doing. We're well, doing. Now we can just talk all we uh, want. You know, <laughs> this is finger food. Yeah. I don't want to see anybody eating ribs with a fork. We want dirty faces. You can, uh, use a fork. you can use that. Yeah, you can use a fork for that. We'll, we'll give yeah. you the coleslaw. So um, one of the nice things about the rub that Jerry um, created is, you know, the ingredients had um, celery powder versus celery salt, garlic powder versus garlic salt. So there was a great effort in reducing the sodium in both of these recipes. And there's no reason why food can't taste good in the absence of too much sodium. So we've got a meal that is a good source of protein, a good source of B vitamins, a good source of vitamin A, a good source of vitamin C, also a good source of fiber too, which is great for our intestinal system, the cabbage. Yes, Pat. Excellent, yep. So the question is about using the palm of your hand as a reference point for a serving size. So my palm would be considered about a three to four ounce serving. So based on the size of your hand, if you've got a mitt like this, then it might be more like eight ounces. <laughs> but typically, you, don't, you might not be weighing things, but you can use a standard deck of cards or the palm of your hand as a standard serving size. Mm -hmm. And three ounces, a standing service size of three ounces, which is good. Sometimes we might have a little bit more or a little bit less, but that's a good range to go for with each meal for your protein source, whether that comes from a vegetable or a meat protein. Yes? How about fish? Would it be more? Fish sometimes looks a little bit smaller, but if it's a thick piece of fish, it might look like a smaller deck of cards. Yeah. Yep. Very good. Yep. Very good. One point about fish is that it tends to dry out really quickly. So what you really, the best thing to do is get a chef's thermometer. They'll cost you five or six dollars in, in some kind of a, a, a supermarket. And, uh, and then temp, it, temp the fish. Get it up to 140 degrees mm -hmm. and it'll be nice and juicy in the inside. Okay, there was a, uh, the, the, there's something called the Canadian method of cooking fish. For a piece of fish which is one inch thick, which is about this thick, and they say to broil it for 10 minutes per one inch. 10 minutes per inch, okay. But I, I really find that I get better results if I use a thermometer. Yeah. And if you'll notice the chef's jacket, we always have pockets. There's always a, a, a thermometer in there when I'm, when I'm cooking because I want it done properly. And and so, please, another question. What should you look for in a barbecue sauce? I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear. What should you look for in a barbecue sauce? In a barbecue sauce. Okay, that's a very we'll good both question. Answer. Because <laughs> no, the answer the answer is real simple, and that is, uh, it isn't simple. And the reason being is that there are barbecue sauces all the way from the Carolinas going up to Kansas City. The, this barbecue sauce, you'll notice that it is, it is thicker. This is typical what Americans think of, of a barbecue sauce. It's got ketchup, brown sugar in it, a number of different seasonings. If you're in the Carolinas, where this potato tomato, uh, coleslaw came from, it's going to be more, it's going to be a vinegar sauce. Mm. It all depends upon what you like, yep. okay? If you really like the ketchup, then buy what they call a Kansas sauce. Most of the sauces that we see in the supermarkets here are a Kansas-style sauce. It doesn't have to be. You know, the, most, the, the, the fun thing about cooking is trying different things. Making a mistake once in a while so you don't like it, next time I'll, I have learned something and I will change it. Yep. And that, that's... I would look at the nutrients, yeah. naturally. So well, I actually... Okay, well... All right, I, will yeah, look, I would look at the of, nutrients. I don't have one. Um, try to s look at the ingredient list and look for as few ingredients as possible. Try to see ingredients that look like whole foods. You know, tomato, even if it says sugar, you know, you know that it's kind of a real food, so to speak. Look at the sodium content 
and look at the little percentage next to the amount of sodium. Actually. Go for less than 10%. And the other thing about food labels is the, what they're really good for is your ability to compare one food to another. So kind of line them all up and I would try to choose the one that has the least amount of sodium in it. Because a lot of times it's just added as a preservative, not necessarily as a flavor enhancer. So that would be my goal. So um, this is our beautiful plate. Nice, huh? Good. So we thank you for tuning in and being here for our delicious and nutritious segment. So our goal is to provide you with simple, easy, delicious, affordable foods. This meal that Jerry created would feed six to eight people, and the total cost would have come to about $40. Okay. Not bad, huh? Thank you so, all for coming. Uh, we've enjoyed having you here. We've been enjoyed being here. Watch outside. us again. Yeah. It's lovely here. Outside. Have a great day. Take care. Yeah.